Hi everyone. A couple of observations that I've made in the Watchtower's publication bearing thorough witness about God's kingdom, their coverage of chapter 4 of the book of Acts. So in chapter 4 of this publication, paragraph 12, they affirm Jesus' promise in Matthew 28. I'm going to read you from the publication. After his resurrection, Jesus promised his disciples that he would continue to be with them all the days until the conclusion of the system of things. Under Jesus' direction, the modern-day slave class teaches us how to defend our beliefs. So I, the comment I, I wanted to, to make was do that you might ask a Jehovah's Witness, do you believe that promise? Because they affirm it here, that he would be with them all the days until the conclusion of the system of things. So the question you can ask a witness, first, do they believe the promise? And second, who was he with? between the time that he says this to his original disciples and modern-day disciples. They think they're the modern-day disciples. So where was he in between? Witnesses are usually pretty fuzzy on history. Side note is that they reference the modern-day slave class and that they take from Matthew 24, 45 to 47 about, you know, who, who is the faithful and wise slave. But one thing that I found out is that many witnesses, because they so frequently see in the publications slave class, they actually think the word class is in the text. So you might want to be aware of that and show them that in the text, that word isn't there. Um, I will refer to, at the end, um, I'll link you to a video where we discuss that particular passage of Scripture more thoroughly. In paragraph 13, after describing Peter's denial of Jesus, they make this statement. This is in paragraph 13. As Jesus foretold, Peter quickly succumbed to the fear of man and denied his friend and teacher. So it struck me when I read it, this is the way witnesses think of Jesus as friend and teacher. No, so that's fine. But what you don't seem to realize is that Peter, after Jesus' death and even while he was alive, by the time of of Jesus' death, Peter had elevated uh, Jesus from friend and teacher to calling him Lord. How often do Jehovah's Witnesses call Jesus Lord? Do we n notice in reading the New Testament the shifts uh, in the designations of of what they call Jesus? Is our view as high as their view of Jesus? Do we view Jesus as beyond friend and teacher, beyond being a fellow believer, a model Jehovah's Witness? Look at the progress of the understanding of the disciples as to who Jesus is and how they address him over the time of his ministry. So here's a, a challenge for you. I'm going to list four passages of scripture for you to look up. John chapter 1, verses 38, 41, and 49. Luke chapter 5, the first eight verses. Matthew chapter 8, verse 27. And John chapter 20, verse 28 you will see a progression in the way they address Jesus from Rabbi to Messiah to Son of God to Lord to my Lord and God. 
by the epistles he is called Lord and Savior. I'm going to link to the coverage that I did when, when I was uh, uh, doing all the sermons or public preaching of the apostles, and I covered chapter 4's public preaching. The video is called, Do the Apostles Love Jesus Too Much? Jerusalem Governing Body Forbids Speaking in the Name of Jesus. And the second one is the one that I mentioned before where we cover the, the text from Matthew about the faithful and discreet slave, who really is the FDS, uh, if not JW Org. It's the first of three videos, so at the end of each one, click on the link, the picture link at the end to get the second and the third part. Thanks.